Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. I thought it was about time, about time, yes, that I showed you around what I am pleased to call Julian's Man Cave, or as we know it in the trade, Julian's Garage. Although it is not strictly my garage, it is the family garage, the family house. Although, as my wife will tell you, don't give me that bollocks. We know whose garage it really is. And yes, who am I? Who am I to argue with the lady of the house? It's not really my garage, but it is. Yes, it is Julian's man cave. And you, yes, you, dear viewer, are going to get a close up view. So come with me. Come with me on a voyage of man cave discovery. Now, I thought we'd start here. Now, this thing that's waving around here is a pointer. Julian's pointer. You can imagine Julian is a school teacher. And what is he pointing at? You'll see here it says Hutchings Julian and Fowler Michael. Yes, it is a, uh, a board from the Duo Normand time trial. A fabulous event in northern France, which I've done a number of times. Michael has done a couple of times and did on a memorable occasion with me. About 34 miles. A fabulous, ascent, uh, uh, a fabulous event open to both amateurs and professionals. And I will let you guess which category Michael and myself fell into. Now, the second area I thought we'd focus in on is this little collection here of books and as you may know despite being a youtuber i am also a writer of some renown and little repute and if you go on to amazon and you type in my name yes julian hutchings you will find the various books that i have written they are available either as a paperback or downloadable for your kindle and some of them are not bad if i say so myself now here you can see where the Pointer is pointing. Is the pointer pointing? Yes. You see there, down in the lower left-hand corner of the frame, it says Ondé sur Bear. Ondé is on the west coast of France, and sur Bear is on the east coast of France, and that is the Raid Pyrenean. Yes, I did the Raid Pyrenean about four years ago with Marmot Tours, and a fabulous event it was. You have to cross the Pyrenees in 100 hours and boy was that an enjoyable journey and if you're looking for a cycle tour within Europe Marmot Tours I can highly recommend them the tool board who does not like a good collection of tools here we have a series of pointy things here we have a pair of mole grips if you ever see a mole in your garden and you think, I've got to get that mole out. Then you nip down and you grab your mole grips and you grab that mole as hard as you can and you pull it out of the ground and there you are. You've got it. Here we have a collection of screwdrivers of various sizes. A collection of spanners here, again, of various sizes to fit various sizes of nut. And along here on the bottom, on this magnetic strip... These are various little sets of pliers, which I use for pulling teeth. Very popular in the neighbourhood. I don't charge very much. And I have a collection of teeth, uh, which I display in my house for any visitors that come round. Not that I have any visitors in my house. This uh, sticker here says, I love Rode microphones. Uh, not quite sure why I stuck that there. I guess I had it. And I thought the thing to do with a sticker is to stick it somewhere. So I stuck it somewhere where the sun don't shine. No, I didn't. I stuck it on the wall. This bicycle frame, or this bicycle frame which you see here hanging up, is a gosling and is a track bicycle, and which I'm in the process of cleaning up and refurbishing. And it is, or well, belongs to the old Portland Cycling Club and was used for many years on a set of rollers for a roller competition which the club used to run not one that i ever took part in because the roller competition ended some years ago before i became a member of the club but this is one of the track bikes and a very fine looking bike it is too so i i hope once i finish cleaning it up to maybe ride it not on the rollers not on the track maybe even on the road who knows 
Here we have one of my most prized possessions. This is a punching bag. You see, I'm sort of punching it with, with my stick. And this is, actually, I bought this off uh, eBay and was one of the original punching bags used by Muhammad Ali when he was training to be a heavyweight boxer. At least that's what I was told uh, by the, per the person who sold it to me on eBay. $2,000, I think I paid for it. And I am well on the way to becoming Muhammad Ali's descendant, not descendant, but you, uh, the reincarnation of Muhammad Ali, because the amount of times that I've spent punching that punch bag is turning me into a great, a great warrior and a great fighter. Cans of gear. This is a special E-Shift group set cleaner. Look, my, uh, my pointer is magnetic. Isn't that interesting? Here is a can of WD-40, uh, which is used for getting the WD out of any 40s that you might have. This is a can of Finish Line Showroom, uh, showroom Polish. Here is Speed Degreaser, which is, I think, largely, which is actually more or less empty. And here is, yes, one of the secrets of any great man cave is premium grease, the kind of things, or the mind boggles about the kinds of things that you can do with premium grease. And there is the chain set of that Gosling cycle, which you saw earlier in the previous clip. You see how the wheel, the wheel turns, the wheel always turns. But where does it take us? Where does the wheel take us? Where do we want to go? It goes, it goes where the world takes us. Look up, look up. That's one of the great piece of advice I can give you, actually. If you're ever uh, walking down the street, perhaps you're walking down an old street in, uh, I don't know, Venice, London, San Francisco, New York, somewhere like that, always look up because uh, what you see up above is often more interesting than what you see down below. And here you can see the famous hanging tires of Babylon. Uh, yes, these are collection collection of tires, some used, some used a lot, some used not quite so much. Uh, some found in Babylon, in the uh, old old civilization of Babylon, where they used to use rubber tires, funnily enough. They hadn't invented the wheel, but they had invented the rubber tire. And here is my collection, or my version, of the hanging tires of Babylon. Feast. Feast your eyes. There you have a general vista. A vista of mess as you look towards the back door. And all the elements, well not all the elements, some of the elements of Julian's man cave there laid out before you. Rubbish, uh, more rubbish, uh, boxes, a bit more rubbish, um, some rubbish not in boxes, uh, some boxes of rubbish, um, and a big collection of boxes ready to be unboxed. And I might even unbox some of the rubbish because it's always nice to go through somebody's rubbish and know what they've got. A collection of caps. Not much else to say about them. Some of them came from famous people, some of them came from my head, some of them may go on to a famous person's head, some of them may go on to a nobody's head. But a cap, if the cap fits, wear it, as they say. They fit me, so I wear them, but not all at once. Shoes. Shoes. Some of you may know I'm rather partial to a pair of shoes. I am known as the Imelda Marcos of West Wickham, and not just because of the shoes. There is a pair of, these are Shimano SPD shoes. This rather fine fetching pair of blue shoes are from Rafa. And these ones up here are Physic Terra gravel shoes. You can just see the bottom of an XS Works box of specialized shoes, which I used to have. I don't have them anymore. I threw them away because they started to fall apart. And here is a, a Shimano box. There's no shoes in there. That's just a a box. I keep the box because it makes it look like I have lots of pairs of shoes, even though I don't actually have lots of pairs of shoes. I have quite a few shoe boxes, and uh, that that fools people who think that they're looking at my shoe collection. Not many people know that uh, Imelda Marcos, although she was famous for having, for having many pairs of shoes, in fact had a lot of pairs of shoe boxes, but only four pairs of shoes. A snack box. Or Julian's box of snacky tricks or tricky snacks. We have here a Cliff Richard crunchy peanut butter bar. We have here a Velo 40 The Fonz, which is uh, I'm not sure what flavour that is. Here's another, no, this is a um, Kendall Mint Cake 
natural energy bar. This is a pair of uh, pear. This is a packet of cheese biscuits. Not quite sure why they're in there. I don't eat those. My, my son eats them. Perhaps he's been sneaking in and stealing my snacks, which might explain why the box is a little bit empty. There, I don't know if you can see there, a pocket tin of Kendall mint cake, and it's magnetic. How about that? There is a what's that? KMC Pro Mix chocolate mint protein packed recovery powder. Still in the packet. Not consumed that yet. A box of snacky tricks. Do you have a box of snacky tricks in your man cave or in your woman cave? And if you don't, why don't you get one? It will change your life. Changed mine. And now, as the tour of Julian's man cave draws to a close, we focus on one of the key items. A t-shirt bearing the emblem, nobody cares. And if you like me, could not care less about the contents of Julian's Man Cave, why don't you get a Nobody Cares t-shirt and let everybody know that you don't care either. Below the t-shirt, and I'm not quite sure if you can see this clearly, but below the t-shirt just here is a black and white photograph of a man in a tweed suit. And that man is Ernest Hemingway. Yes, one of the great writers of the 20th century and one of my favourite writers too, Ernest Hemingway. Check out his works. Up here, you can see the old clubhouse sign of the old Portland Cycling Club. Currently hanging in my man cave as I'm looking after it for the old Portlands until we find an appropriate uh, location to put that clubhouse sign. And... Hanging below it is a series of postcards. Postcards that mean quite a lot to me. A postcard of the third man, one of my favourite films. A photograph of me with my daughter. A photograph or a postcard from Switzerland, one of my favourite places. A postcard down here. Not sure if you can see that. Not sure you can, actually. It's right down the bottom there. You have to look very closely. Um, it's for the... Um, Michael Cimino film of, um, what's it called? Uh, Voyage au bout de Fonfair. What is that? What was that? I, I can't work. I can't remember. Isn't that terrible? Uh, anyway, one of my favourite films. And there, I can't even remember the name of one of my favourite films. What is the world coming to? And look up. Remember what I said about looking up? If we look up there, we see a photograph of, yes, Julian Hutchings, and that those were in the days when I had a beard, when I was a lot younger and my beard was whiter. Now that I'm older, my beard, of course, is no longer white, it's now brown, or even reddish, reddish brown. And I'm riding there a Canyon Endurace, a bike that I don't have anymore, and that is at the Liège Baston Liège Sportive, which was about six or seven or eight or nine years ago, and a fabulous event that was, and it snowed and the weather was atrocious, but I had a great weekend with the old Portland Cycling Club, and let's hope we can do many more of those. don't know how well you can see that picture on the wall. That is the picture of the Infanta, the Spanish, or the Spanish daughter of the Spanish king, who was called the Infanta, and it's where the drink of the same name gets its name, uh, because she was a big fan of uh, Fanta, that rather bubbly, uh, rather sweet, lemony-flavoured, sugary drink the infanta a bag of bags no doubt your man cave also has because no man cave and indeed no woman's cave is complete without a bag of carrier bags you save them for you know not what know not what eventuality but we are saving them they're single-use plastic but i'm looking to use them again a bag of bags toilet paper do you keep toilet paper in your man cave Sometimes a man of a certain age gets caught short in his man cave and so he needs toilet paper. And this, I'm not sponsored by these people, although if they want to sponsor me, they're welcome to do so because I do like their toilet paper, Kuchel. I find it very soft, soft on the flesh, and I also find it quite effective at doing that final little extra clean. And I'm sure viewers, you know what I mean tools on the tool board and most of these tools I have no idea 
what they are for and I have no idea of how to use them but you've got to say they are a pretty impressive collection of tools if you know how to use the tools leave a comment down below that's what they're for a collection of toothbrushes used for cleaning things sometimes my teeth sometimes chain rings sometimes chains sometimes to get that black stuff out from between my toes there you can see a tape measure and i'm pointing to it and it's on a bracket i'll take the tape measure off the bracket so you can see this was my own design and uh, I, I did patent it it's available from ebay but i thought it was quite a clever design uh, and gives you somewhere to store your um, tape measure so why not uh, think about doing something like that yourself make a bit of money for me jars jars jar of hearts remember that song who was that by i quite like that was it ellie goulding no i don't think it was ellie goulding and there there's a plastic boxes of hearts and here more plastic boxes of hearts and here ikea plastic boxes of hearts and here a whole little display case of broken hearts that julian has left on his passage through life and occasionally he's broken his own and there we are we focus in on some of the books that i've written for your enjoyment well actually largely for my enjoyment but if you enjoyed it then why not why not i like to see my name that's why i bought most of the copies of my books have actually been bought by me but then i think that goes for most writers um it certainly went for um tolstoy who bought the first thousand copies of war and peace and in fact wallpapered his house with them not many people know that and lastly, rounding off this tour of Julian's Man Cave would not be appropriate to finish with anything other than B. Moore Bash. Ian Bashford, a fine, very popular member of the Old Portland Cycling Club for a number of years, tragically killed in 2016 while taking part in the Duo Normand time trial, which I referred to at the start of this show. Uh, Ian Bashford, great friend to us all, great cyclist, uh brother on the road you could call him one of the best people you would know and uh this this sticker that we had made up on the anniversary of his death was to remind us that we should all try and be more bash we should all try and be more helpful to other cyclists we should all try and be hard work harder as a cyclist get out when the weather was bad uh, always stop to help people always have a kind word for people and just be a stronger cyclist and a better human being. So this particular video is dedicated to the memory of Ian Bashford. And as we say, be more bash. And if we can all do that in our lives, this would be a better place for everyone. So thanks for watching. Please remember that my videos raise money for the Vine Food Bank, which is in Croydon in the United Kingdom. And please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And I'll come back and see you for another video very soon. Thanks for watching.